Smart pointers are pointers with metadata and additional capabilities. One of the most common smart pointer that you will probably encounter is called a box. A box is a smart pointer that will allow data to be stored on the heap. It's useful for data where the size of the data is not known at compile time. Data where the size is not known at compile time will not compile in Rust unless it is behind a reference or a pointer such as a box. Some examples of data where the size is not known at compile times are trait objects and recursive data structures. A trait object is basically something that implements a trait without specifying the type. Since we don't specify the type, the size may not be known at compile time. Let's look at some examples of how to store data into a box, how to return trait objects, and how to declare recursive data structures using box. Let's say that we have a variable called i of the type i32. The size of the i32 is known at compile time, so this variable will be stored on the stack. However, we can force Rust to store this data on the heap by using a box. To store this variable into a box, we use the function box colon colon u. And then inside the parentheses, we put our variable in. This will create a box of the type i32, which will store the variable i onto the heap. To access a value that is stored inside the box, we dereference the box. Now that we know how to use a box, let's look at an example of returning a trait object from a function using a box. Consider a function that reads a file and then parses the content inside the file into a i32. Opening the file at the file path that is specified by the input and then loading the content of the file into a string may fail. When either of these operations fail, it returns a stdio error. If parsing the data into a i32 fails, it returns an error called stdnum parse int error. So what should we specify for the error type of the result? The first two operations return stdio error on fail. The last operation of parsing the file content into i32 may fail with the error stdnum parse int error. So there are two possible error types that can be returned here. One way to return both of these errors is to specify that the error to be returned is a trait that implements the std error error. Since this is a trait object, we will need to prefix it with the din keyword. The size of a trait object is not known at compile time, so we will need to wrap this into a box. This is how we are able to return two types of error without specifying the type of error that we're returning. Here we're saying that whatever error that is being returned will implement the trait std error error. So this is an example of returning a trait object wrapped in a box. For the last example, let's take a look at recursive data structure. Let's create a data structure that will represent a binary tree. The binary tree will store a value of the type i32. The left and the right branch of a binary tree will again be a tree. This is an example of a recursive data structure. Now the left and the right branch may not exist, so we'll wrap this in an option. However, this code will not compile. Try to compile the code, and it returns an error recursive type tree has infinite size. To fix this, we need to put the tree in a box. Both the left and the right branch will be an option of a box which stores a tree. Compile the code again, and this time the code compiles. The code now compiles because both the left and the right branch, if it exists, will be stored on the heap. If the left branch exists, it will simply store a pointer. Remember that a box is a smart pointer. A pointer has a fixed size. And likewise, if the right branch exists, again, it will store a pointer. So now the size of this struct is known at compile time. The value will have the size that is needed to store i32. The left and the right branch, if they exist, will store a pointer. All of the sizes that are needed to store this struct is now known at compile time. So by using a box, we turn the recursive data structure with unknown size at compile time into a recursive data structure with known size at compile time. For the last example, let's initialize a tree inside the main function. So let's say that tree is equal to a tree structure, having the values one. For the left branch, let's say it's another tree. The branches are option a box, which contains a tree. So when a branch exists, we'll wrap it in a sum followed by a box. Since we're gonna put the tree in the box, we'll call the function new. And inside new, we'll put our tree in. In the left branch, let's put value for two. And then this tree will have another left branch and a right branch. For the left branch, let's put it as none. And for the right branch, let's put another tree. Sum, box, new, followed by another tree followed by value, let's say three, and then it's gonna have another left branch and a right branch. We'll end our example for the left branch here, so we'll specify both of these branches as none. Okay, and now let's move on to the right branch. Right branch, let's say is a sum, again with a box, new, tree, and for the values, let's put in val equal to four, 
and we'll keep the example short and simple by putting the left and the right branch as none. Let's print this tree out. We'll print the tree out by using the debug feature, curly braces, colon, hashtag, question mark, and then outside the double quotes, I'll put in the tree. Execute the code, and this is what our tree looks like. How do we access a value in this tree? For example, let's access this value. This will be inside the left branch, and then from the left branch, you'll need to navigate to the right branch, and finally navigate bell. So this is tree.left.right.bell. This is tree.left. Left is an option, and we know that it is sum, so we'll call on rep. Next, we access the right branch, which is right, and we also know that the right is a sum with some value, so we'll call on wrap again. And finally, we'll access the value inside the right branch, call bow. Execute the code again, and we get tree left right bow is equal to three. So these are some examples of using the box smart pointer. They're useful when you want to return trait objects, or when you want to declare a recursive data structure.